Alright, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Staring Into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr. And with me as always is my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? Good evening, misfits, sugar ladies, and demon hunters. I'm doing pretty good, brother. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. Um, tonight is the episode that we teased last night. Um, it is whether or not Elizabeth Bathory, the Blood Countess was actually a vampire. Um, for those of you that listened to the writer's block last night, I did a complete history of Elizabeth Bathory. So if you want to know more about Elizabeth Bathory and get her complete history, like all the, all the, the details, then go check that show out on the YouTube channel. And I mean, it's everything you ever wanted to know about the woman. Uh, on tonight's episode, we're going to deal with some of the theories that people have said about Elizabeth Bathory. Um, about being a vampire and being in the basis of the Dracula uh, stories and a lot of different things like that. So I think what we'll do is I'll give you a, a just a quick overview. I won't bore you with a bunch of, of dates and numbers and all that kind of stuff. If, if you really want all, the, all those particulars, check out the writer's block that I did last night on YouTube. Um, but basically, Elizabeth Bathory was a countess in Hungary. Um, she was raised in a family full of Satanist and, and witches and the occult. A lot of people, when they think of Elizabeth Bathory, they think of the good, you know, Puritan Christian woman who just happened to be a, a terrible monster killer, right? But the image they have of her is that she was this stern and conservative kind of woman. But... Actually, that's the exact opposite of what this woman was. She was a freaking wild woman. I mean, she was a party animal. The things that went on at her castle were insane. Um, her husband, she got engaged at, at um, age 11. And she was actually married um, by like 14 or 15. And she had a illegitimate child at 14 with a peasant. And the rest of the children she had were with her husband. Um, he went off to war, so she spent the majority of her time all by, her, by herself. And she needed to find things to entertain herself and keep herself busy. She lived in a castle, and they had 17 uh, different villages that she was in charge of. And she could basically do whatever she wanted with these villagers that lived in these villages. And because she was the one that ruled them. And she really, really did. Um, there was a lot of parties that went on. There was um, a lot of drinking, a lot of, you know, doing any kind of substances that they could get their hands on to, to, to get high and make them feel good. There was wild sex orgies. There was S&M. There was bondage. There was beatings. There was torture. There was all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff that this chick was into. Um, so the idea that she was this straight-laced, you know, stiff shirt kind of woman is just fantasy it's not even close to the reality she was a wild woman now she partied like that for quite a while and it got to the point where she kind of got bored because you can only do those kind of things for so long before they don't seem as fun anymore you know and you get bored and that's what happened to her and she was looking for something that was a little bit more exciting a little bit more fun um, she was lonely because her husband had been off at war. And so she started talking to her husband through letters about the things that he was doing while he was away at, at war. And basically what he was doing was torturing people, you know, torturing the enemy and, and killing them and stuff. And he would describe to her all the different ways he would torture people and everything. And she kind of got excited by that. It, it made her feel good to to know about the different ways that that he would torture people and hurt people and she decided to to start to try some of these things out on her own and and that's what she did um, she used to do some really really crazy stuff um, some examples of that are uh, when it was like freezing weather outside and really really cold she would take young women and she would strip them naked and she would have them go out into the courtyard and stand below her window. And then 
she would have people pour water on these women over and over and over again until the water started to freeze on them and layer after layer this water would freeze until the women were like frozen you know what I mean they were like encased in a, in a thin layer of ice like statues and then she would go and sit and relax and just stare at the, at the ice statues that she had made for hours um, she would stick pins like little needle pins under the girls nails um, sometimes she would heat them up so that they were really really red hot before she stuck them under the nails and the heat and the pressure would cause the nails actually to pop off of the fingers and fly up in the air and she got a kick out of that she loved to do that um, whenever somebody was suspected of stealing from her or from somebody in her in her, her villages uh, one of the th punishments she loved to do was she would take coins and she would heat them in the fire until they were like glowing red hot and then she would force the thieves to hold those coins in their hands until they weren't hot anymore and it would just burn you know severely burn the hands and just melt through the hand it was it was pretty nasty um, she would pull it pull at your mouth like the corners of your mouth until your mouth ripped open um, she would put red hot pokers on the face of her servants and, and some of the peasants um, she would make teen girls strip naked and stand out in public in front of all the men so that they would, you know, catcall at them and, and you know, just to embarrass and humiliate the women. Um, basically, I mean, that, that kind of thing she would do. She was crazy. I mean, she was a terrible, evil person. And she would do all these horrible things. The thing that she's best known for, I think, is the bathing in blood thing. Um, whenever people think about Elizabeth Bathory, that's what they think of, of her in the tub, you know, bathing in the blood of, of young virgin girls. And that is 100% accurate. It happened multiple, multiple times. Now, where that comes from is she had connections with, through her family and, and, and otherwise, with Satanism and with witchcraft, like I was saying, and the occult. And she actually had advisors and people that she trusted who were witches. And that's where she got the idea that that bathing in blood could make her young because what had happened was there was one of her servants that was brushing her hair and she, the servant did it too hard and it hurt and it and it pissed Elizabeth Bathory off so she turned around and slapped the hell out of the girl well when she slapped the hell out of the girl blood went from the girl and got on her hand and she noticed that the spot on her hand where the blood had been was younger looking to her. It didn't look like it had as much wrinkles. It looked like a younger hand in that area. And so she thought, oh my God, I mean, that blood, I think it, I think it made me younger there. You know, I think it might actually make me younger. So she went and she talked to her witchcraft friends about it. And they confirmed, yes, indeed, that is exactly what would happen. Um, but the one that she saw actually told her that she should only do it her name was Darv Darvulia I believe Darvulia that she should only do it to peasants that she didn't want to mess with nobility because nobody would care about the peasants so she could kill as many peasants as she wanted and nothing would happen to her but not to mess with the nobility um, and she stuck to that for, for quite a long time until Darvulia died and once she died the woman that took over for her and started advising um, Elizabeth Bathory she told her that if she used noble blood that the effect would be even greater and that it would work even better and so that is what put that seed in the mind of Elizabeth Bathory that she needed to start killing nobles you know plus she had gotten to the point at that time that she had done just about everything there was to do to the peasant girls, you know? I mean, she was bathing in their blood. She was drinking the blood. She used to like to take their hand and hold it over top the table, and she would slice their wrist. 
and she would let the blood just pour down into a, a, a fancy wine glass that she kept. And then she would, you know, drink it like she was drinking a fine wine. Uh, she would bathe in it. She would wash her hair in it. She would use it as a as a face moisturizing cream like this. She would rub it in all over her body. Um, she was doing that kind of stuff. She was also doing the tortures that I had already talked about. And she would had a lot of weird tortures she would do as well where she would like smear she would strip the uh, girl na- down naked and she would smear honey all over the naked body of the girl and then she would take the girl and she would tie them to a tree in the woods and let like you know ants and bees and other bugs go at her and you know wild animals would come in and, and start eating on them and just basically rip them apart um, there was one time when she took this one girl and she stripped her down and she put him put her in a cage and the cage was not quite tall enough to where she could stand up but it wasn't wide enough to where she could sit down either so the girl was kind of stuck in a slouchy kind of position and then they raised the cage up and spikes came out of the cage and just shredded the girl up and elizabeth bathory while you know this girl was in the cage before it got raised and she got sliced up she got undressed so she was naked and she stood underneath the cage and as the woman got sliced up the woman's blood rained down on her and so basically she had a nice little blood shower she used it like like we would use the shower to have herself a blood shower so not only did she have blood baths but she would have blood showers and that might even be where the term bloodbath comes from. That that sounds like that might be true, but don't don't quote me on that because I don't know for sure. But that sounds like something that that makes sense to me. Um, she eventually moved on to nobles and started killing the daughters of the lower-ranking nobles, like the dukes and the duchesses and such. And that's when things started to kind of go south for her because, I mean, she had racked up one hell of a big number. Of, of dead people. I mean, she killed at least 650 people. Some estimates yep. take that into the thousands. Okay, we don't know for sure, but we know that over 300 people testified against her. And in her journals, she talks about, you know, all these different people that she killed. And so when you add up all the evidence, Basically, you come up with at least 650, but most likely that number is at least double that, I would say, maybe even more, because a lot of those people that were killed, there's really no record of. And at first, she used to bury them and all that kind of stuff, but then it got to the point where she felt so untouchable that she would just kind of chuck them out the window and let the wolf see them, you know? So there's a lot of bodies that were never recovered. Nobody ever knows what happened to the people um, but basically she started messing with the nobility and taking their kids and then the kids would would come over to the house and she would do what she did you know torture them murder them and you know she had this habit also of she started getting into cannibalism to where she would just bite huge hunks of meat off of you while you were still alive and eat them in front of you so she would eat you in front of you which is crazy, crazy scary. And she started doing this stuff to the nobility, and they would come over and not go home. And then their parents would be like, where the hell is my daughter, you know? And, of course, Elizabeth Bathory had no idea. They left here perfectly fine. I don't know what happened to them. And, you know, they were dead. So it got to the point to where people started suspecting what was going on. And it... To make matters worse, Elizabeth Bathory really didn't care what they thought because she thought that she was untouchable. You know, she had got reached the point to where she was deep, deep in this madness by this point. So she would literally dispose of bodies right in front of people. She didn't care. She would just dump them right at the front of the castle. And there'd be villagers everywhere and people would see what was going on and she could give a damn. And what ended up happening was there was this Hungarian priest who had the guts to stand up and say, hey, this isn't right. You know, she's killing everybody. You know what I mean? So he accused her in public. And he actually went to the king and said, hey, this isn't cool. This is what's going on. You know what I mean? This is People are getting killed. And so the king talked to the nobles and said, what's going on here? And so then the nobles got the idea that Elizabeth had killed their 
their daughters. And so they decided to take matters in their own hand and they were going to go get her. Um, so they got the permission of the king to actually go capture Elizabeth Bathory and bring her in um, for trial. So they, they went to her castle and they just kind of busted their way in. And when they got in, the scene that they found was so horrific that these people who... Now keep in mind, they're battle-hardened people. Okay, these aren't, aren't little soft people like we have now. These are people that that fought wars. These are people that were ankle deep in blood on the battlefield. They've hacked off limbs and heads in battle. These are not people that have never seen blood before. These are not people that are shocked and scared easily. Um, but the sight that they saw when they walked into her castle, they actually, the history records their words. They said that the scene was so horrific that they could not even describe it. That they couldn't even they would, wouldn't even try to describe it, it was so bad. So that should tell you how bad it was for them when they walked in, how horrible it was, the things that she was doing, because these tough-ass, battle-hardened people didn't even want to talk about it. It was that bad. Um, but basically they walked in and there was blood and guts and gore everywhere. You know, she's head to toe covered in blood, you know, working on somebody as they, as they go in, and they catch her red-handed. Um, so they snatch her up, and they take her, and she goes to trial. Um, they also round up all the people, her servants that worked for her and stuff, that actually helped her to get the girls and to keep the girls from escaping, help her to sto- dispose of the bodies, and help cover up the crimes. Um, these people, a lot of them, I don't really blame them so much because, yes, it's wrong what they did, but if they didn't do what they were told, they would have been killed as well. So they were kind of you know, trying to save their own backsides a little bit. But they were all rounded up and arrested as well. Now, all of the people that were arrested were sentenced to death, except for Elizabeth Bathory. She didn't get death. She was actually sentenced to confinement to her to her room until she died of natural causes. Now, that might sound like not a bad deal, you know, you might say, well, hell, I could go kill 650 people, do whatever the hell I want, and then they're just going to give me basically house arrest. I'll hang out in my house and play my Xbox and eat nachos and have a good time. No worries, right? Well, the thing is, it wasn't like she was hanging out in her living room or her bedroom or some comfortable spot of her castle. They actually constructed a room in her castle for her. They brought in bricklayers and they had bricklayers build a brick room in there, a stone room that she couldn't get out of. And it was completely enclosed with the exception of a small slit for air and a small slit to put food through so that she could be fed and and given water. Um, But it was way too small for her to get out and it was way too small for her to be able to do anything with, you know what I mean? It was just a little slit in the wall. So basically that's what she was confined to. Uh, a small little area that she just had to live in that was just a wall. And she lived that way for over three years before she finally died of natural causes. Um, So that is the history of, a brief history, not the complete history, but it's a brief history of Elizabeth Bathory. Now some of these theories that they have about her, um, one is that she is the, the basis for or one of the inspirations for the story of Dracula. Now we all know Vlad Tepish, also known as Vlad Dracula. He was the the namesake of the Dracula stories. It's named after him. But a lot of people say that Elizabeth Bathory had a lot more in common with Dracula from the stories than Vlad Tepish did. Now, we all know Vlad Tepes used to dip his bread in the blood and eat it. And he did a lot of other horrible, horrible things. Um, But Elizabeth, she bathed in the blood. She drank the blood. um, She ate the flesh. And there's other things that she did that that match up with that story as well. So 
I've, I've given you the basic history, and I'm going to throw over to Old Boy, and he's got some interesting stuff about Elizabeth Bathory to talk about, and then we'll do a little bit of comparisons with whether or not she was a vampire and try to figure this out. Go ahead, Old Boy. Take it away, brother. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, brother. Um, another thing about what you were saying about her being the Brad Stoker story, Stroker, um, there is a lot of similarities to Dracula, but the problem is you got to remember the Dracula story, you know, how his wife, you know, his wife killed herself and she came, remember she, he came back for her. So that parts where that, where they say there's an argument on it because remember he goes crazy and betrays God and, you know, a hundred years later thinks he sees her again. And, but there's, there's parts that he might've got from Elizabeth. Um, what, what I know about her, it wasn't just her servants, her, her younger, her oldest daughter was helping her kill these, uh, girls too. Um, from the ages of 10 to 15, she would not only take their blood and swim in them, like basically swim in their blood, you know, and bathing it, bathing in it. They would rape, torture, eat, um, just do all kinds of nasty stuff to these girls. And her daughter was involved in it too. And they were into Satanism and, and now, now coming to find out witchcraft. I didn't know that part. Um, she was a countess also. Um, you also know that about when you were talking about her husband, you know that she didn't take his name either. You know that, right, James? Yes, because the reason why was because she <laughs> had a higher station than he did. She was higher rank yeah. nobility, so she kept the Bathory name. You're absolutely right. Okay, cool. So Bathory name, uh, um, but her daughter was just as evil too, and her kid, basically her son too. I think they were all supposedly eating, drinking blood. So she died, I think, in 1614. Well. About five years later, in the same village, they said girls started disappearing. And they dug up her grave, and she wasn't in the grave. But there's arguments about this, because they said they'd have her in a grave, and then they said they didn't. And then they got, they, they, they said her grave was empty just recently. There's many stories about, about this. you got to remember how folklore folk, folk uh, goes. But she wasn't in there, and a supposedly... Uh, maidens started dying, the say, like, you know, getting killed. And uh, supposedly they found her body and burned it. And it never happened anymore. And they think she might have been a real vampire. Now, do I think that? I don't know. Because, you know, they also said the same kind of story about Vlad, that he wasn't in his grave either. and that there's that his uh the skull his, of his body had vampire teeth there's all kinds of stories about that too but i think maybe i don't know she was something because supposedly she came back to life in 1619 5 years after she died and people started dying do i think she was a vampire or do i think it was a bullshit story might have been might have not been you know just like i said folklore People like to tell, you know, around a campfire. Back then, we didn't have they didn't have TVs like me and you know uh, James have. You know, they talk like we are right now about stories and stuff, and people would exaggerate them and get them worse than they were. And that's you know, I think that she was a cannibal. I think she had a lust for blood, but I don't know. She might have been a vampire because. You know, some of the stuff she did was pretty gruesome, and it was all blood and drinking blood and showering in blood and even eating blood, you know, eating body parts and raping. But the, the, she was also uh, a lesbian, they're saying, too. She liked women. That's the other thing. She liked having uh, sex with women. I'm not trying to get too graphic, but she liked, in, in the sixth thing, she liked little teenagers and young preteens. So she also liked to rape these women too. Uh, these girls, sorry, not I wouldn't even say they're women, preteens, and some were teens, but would torture them in painless ways, like he said, open up their stomach, pretty much bathe in their blood, like he said, got that 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 device which she would 
basically take a blood shower out of uh, while this poor woman girl was getting cut up. She had no respect for for any kind of humanity. She killed around 650 to 1,250 people or more. There was an argument about that one. It could even be more than that. So, uh, do what, what do I think she is? I think she was a witch, probably a blood mage. She did a lot of witchcraft with blood. And a lot back then, a lot of Satanists did a lot of things with people's bodies. You know, with, you know, they're supposedly, if you've seen that movie Witch, you know, they used to take babies and use the baby fat, you know, and think they could be immortal. There's all kinds of stories about that. And, and you know, Satanists used to sacrifice people. I think she just went blood stalking crazy, didn't care because she thought she could get away with everything and just didn't care about life anymore. And that's what a lot of people do. They get power and then just want more and more. Do I think she was a vampire? There's a possibility, you know. If she, you know, there's stories of her coming back to life. They can't find her in the grave. So that kind of, and there's stories of recently up to about 50 years ago, they said somebody claims they saw her, you know, or, or something cl similar to her. So I don't know. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty detailing story. I, I don't know. I, I think she might be a vampire. I don't know. What do you think, James? There's an interesting uh, historical perspective here as well to the story of her coming back to life. Um, during that time period, there was a lot of that going on. Because what would happen is you would have bad uh, weather, you would have droughts, and you would have times where there was infestations of different you know, insects like locusts and, and stuff like that that would destroy the crops. Or there was years where the crops just wouldn't wouldn't come in very well because you would have a really really late frost or something like that and so being superstitious people what they thought was that there was a a vampire that was that was screwing everything up or they would have you know a plague come through where where a lot of their kids were getting sick and dying so they would say well you know somebody must be coming back from the dead and and killing our kids at night they're, they're drinking their blood and killing them and you know that's that's the way they thought so historically what they did was they started digging people up that had recently died and they would put a stake through their heart and they would decapitate the corpse and then they would burn it and once they did all three of those things if they had the right person then the theory was that whatever the affliction was that was taking place in the community it would stop so if it was the crops were failing, then the crops would stop failing. If it was that the young people were dying, then the young people would stop dying because they got the right person. If whatever it was that they were trying to stop continued, that didn't mean in their minds they were wrong about the whole thing and it was a dumb idea to dig up corpses and do all that to them. In their mind, they thought, okay, well, we just didn't get the right person yet. It must not have been old Jed over there. It must have been Wilma. Wilma's the one that's doing it, so let's go dig Wilma up, and we're going to put a stake in her heart, cut her head off, and set her on fire. So, I think that might be where that, that legend comes from with Elizabeth Bathory, is the reason they did those things is because they claimed the people were vampires and they were affecting their community after death. Um, so, the legend was already there that Elizabeth Bathory might be a vampire because of the blood drinking, the flesh eating, and the bathing in blood so that story might have come about because of something that was going on whether it be a sickness or whether it be um, a serial killer that was operating in the area who was killing people and they thought okay that's Elizabeth Bathory must be doing that let's go dig this chick up and let's take care of her so she doesn't do it anymore you know what I mean it very well could have been something along those lines that caused that um, there's some very interesting um, correlations between the vampire legend and the story of Elizabeth Bathory. Um, the first obvious one is the blood. Okay, she drank the blood. Vampires drink the blood. That's easy. She bathed in the blood. Okay, but the interesting thing about the blood to me is the idea that the blood will give her youth. Okay, the blood will turn back the hands of time make her young again basically the blood is giving her immortality and we know that vampires are immortal 
because they drink blood. So that's an interesting little correlation between the the real life story of Elizabeth Bathory and the legends and lore of the vampire. Um, some of the other kind of things that are that are similar is the level of viciousness and butchery that Elizabeth Bathory showed <coughs> and then the level of viciousness and butchery that vampires show. Now I'm not talking about twilight vampires. I'm not talking about the sparkly guys that go out in the sun and play and have fun. <laughs> I'm not even really talking about Dracula here because Dracula was an aristocrat, aristocrat which also ties in with Elizabeth Bathory because she was nobility, she was a countess and Bram Stoker's Dracula was a count. Okay? Countess, count. Just the male counterpart of the countess. So that's another correlation there between the two. Um, but the original vampires in lore were not sophisticated. They were not, you know, suave and sexy and, you know, cool. They were none of those things. The original vampires were hideous, they were scary as hell, and they were vicious. They would not only drink your blood, but they would rip you apart to get to it, and they would eat some of you in the process. Okay, so the original vampires from lore are not what the vampires have evolved into in fiction by the time of Dracula. So there's a correlation between the, the actual legends of vampires and Elizabeth Bathory as well. Also the idea that she feeds on the blood like a vampire feeds on the blood. And she feeds on the blood of young girls. Okay, of, of the young, of youth. That's another kind of a, a, a wink and a nod at, at immortality and turning back the hands of time. Because she's not going after just anybody. You know, she's going after the young because she believes that the young, their blood will be able to make her young. And there's another interesting correlation with that idea and what is going on in real life in our society today. There are people that are doing what Elizabeth Bathory did, how she, she bathed in the blood because she believed it made her younger. There are people that are using the blood of the young now in today's society to remain young or at least remain alive. Um, yep. What they're doing is it, it's only happening with the, with the mega elite, the people that are the richest in the world. And I mean, I'm talking people like the Queen of England. I'm talking people like the Rockefellers, people like that. Okay, what they're doing is they are getting a young person, whether it's male or female, it doesn't really matter. But it has to be a, a child, basically. And they are pay, in most cases, they pay the kids. And they're doing a blood transfusion. So they're taking the blood of the child and they're transfusing it into their own body. Now, what this does is it makes them feel younger. It makes them makes their body react as if it's younger, so it's it feels healthier, and it it can actually keep them alive. There's been cases where people have had fatal diseases that were supposed to kill them within a month, and they have actually lived multiple years after their diagnosis by doing these blood transfusions because the blood of the young has certain um, antibodies and certain properties of it that is able to fight off disease much better than the blood of a really really old person so there is some science behind it I mean we know that we get stem cells from from uh, babies from from real real young the blood of the young is a lot more capable of repairing damage to the body than than our blood is as we get older. So the elites are actually using this blood through transfusions and and when they get a transfusion it can last anywhere from two to three weeks to two to three months before they need another one and this is actually being done in our society now and it's it kind of it's interesting to me because people look at Elizabeth Bathory and they say wow you know this chick was a monster she is evil as hell. And those people are absolutely correct. She was absolutely a monster, okay? She, there's no doubt about it. She was evil 
as evil can be. Okay, the things that she was doing, she was raping kids, she was eating people, she was drinking blood, she was bathing in blood, she was torturing the hell out of people. She was evil, okay? Bottom line, no doubt about it. But the reason why people think about that and think about Elizabeth Bathory being so horrible isn't necessarily all the different tortures and horrible things that she was doing because not a lot of people know about those things. What the average person knows about Elizabeth Bathory is that she took baths in the blood of her victims. And that little tidbit makes her stand out. And that little tidbit is what people look at and say, man, that's horrible, she's so evil. But yet that same basic principle is happening today. Now, they're not bathing in the blood. I, I give you that. But they are using blood transfusions to accomplish the goal that she was trying to reach through bathing in the blood. I believe maybe if she would have known about blood transfusions, then she would have done the same thing. Okay, And a lot of the elites have tie-ins with, with mysticism and with witchcraft and Satanism as well nowadays. And that, I believe, goes directly back to that time period and some of the same people that Elizabeth Bathory had tie-ins with as well. So there is a correlation not only between the methodology and the idea and the principle behind it, but also there's almost a direct line of people back to that time as well, which is very, very interesting to me. But people nowadays, they, they hear about this and they don't think much of it. You know, and it's not just the fact that the elite are doing this. I mean, we use blood transfusions in, in medicine, where we take somebody else's blood into our body to save ourselves, to to extend our life. That's basically what she was doing. She was trying to become younger, but so that she had more years and would look beautiful and stuff. And we use blood transfusions to benefit ourselves now in medicine, and nobody ever bats an eye at it. Nobody really stops to think that, hey, this is somebody else's blood. I'm putting it in my body. That's kind of crazy. You know, it's kind of strange. I think it's because the blood is flowing through a tube. And they don't have to get sticky with the blood. They don't have to touch it. It's going through a tube. It looks, you know, official. Everything's medical. It's all wonderful. It smells like antiseptic. No worries. If she would have had that kind of technology back then, then maybe some of the things that she was doing wouldn't have looked so terrible. You know what I mean? Once again, I'm not excusing the murders. I'm not excusing the torture. Any of that. It was all horrible. And there's no way to say it wasn't. That's not what I'm trying to say. But just the, the idea of bathing in the blood that people find so um, repulsive and apprehensible. Maybe if it was done the way we do it nowadays using medical technology, using, you know, the tubes and needles and everything is sterile and clean, then maybe people wouldn't be so shocked by that. You know, or maybe they would. I don't know. But it's just, to me, that's always been an interesting part. What do you think about that, old boy? Do you think, you think that there's any correlation between the two or do you think I'm just kind of crazy right now? No, there's a correlation to it. I mean, if you think about it, if she would have had the the same technology they had... It, it it wouldn't have been as bad. Now, her eating people and bathing in blood, it still would have been gory. But I think it wouldn't have been as bad. I think you're right. And I think, just to let you know, is another theory I have, is, once again, she was a countess, so she probably was involved in some kind of Satanist shit with the Illuminati or some kind of group like them. And this is And this is where I'm coming to. And this is where everybody's going to have to realize this is what I'm coming to on all this stuff. With all these murders and all these weirdo people who do all this nasty stuff. The real goal is they don't want to die. And I think that that's been a, uh, people's accession for life to never die. And I think that's what they do some of this crap for. They believe they're going to live forever or they don't want to grow old. And they get assessed with being living forever or they think they're going to get some kind of power out of this and the devil is going to give them what they really want because God's not going to let you live forever. God's not going to give you what you want. You can't just kill somebody and just get away with it. But if you do it with the devil, you can and you and that gives you an excuse to do whatever you want. And I think that's why all this stuff happens because I think people are 
so scared of dying, they want to find a way to live forever. And I believe some of this this stuff happens. I think also it happens because people are just batshit crazy too. And or they just don't care for humanity. You know, when you kill about twenty people after a while you don't care anymore. It's becomes like killing a cockroach. And, you know, the way I think it with her is the way she's killed so many people, you know, that's really that's crazy. I mean, thousands, I say thousands of people. I just think that's what they know of. And I just, that's crazy, you know, because think about it. She would have to kill that many people because she basically took a bath every other day or something in blood. So she would have to kill so many people because, you know, every person you kill, you know, because eventually blood starts smelling and it goes bad, you know, and she was drinking and eating it. And, you know, you could get sick because, I mean, not all these peasants were probably disease-free, you know. You had a lot of girls that probably had sick sickness. Like, you know, back then you had a lot of, uh, what, what are they, measles. They had chicken pox. They had infalusia. I don't know how to say that word. Um, you know what I'm getting into. You know, the Black Plague I influenza. And then you had, um, you know, meat mumps. You had, you know... Blood diseases like hepatitis. You know, they had hepatitis back then. I don't know if they had AIDS yet. Um, no. But they had gonorrhea. They had all kinds of sepalous shit. In back, they didn't have gonorrhea there? I thought they did. No, they didn't have AIDS back then. But AIDS came um, about in the early 80s. Yeah, they all didn't have AIDS. Yeah, 80s. Okay. Back to what I was saying is, you gotta remember, back then, you were making get married at 12, 13 years old, like James said. And some of these girls probably got taken advantage of, either sold for prostitution or, so, or you know, something bad happened to them. You know, drinking blood is not good for you. Some people, I mean, there's arguments about that. Some people say eating organs and cannibals claim to make you younger and make you stronger. You know, that was some of the rumors on that, like, you know, Han Hannibal Lecter used to say, but you can't drink blood. I used to be a dialysis technician. I went to school. I worked in the field for five or six years. The, the, the process is I saw blood. I worked with blood. You stuck somebody onto a machine because their kidneys no longer work or function right. And you run the blood through a machine. And you run it back through an artificial kidney because that's how your kidneys get clean. But... Blood can have hepatitis. Now I have we had AIDS. We didn't even mess with it if it, somebody had a HIV or AIDS. They got thrown. They used a different kidney every time a new kidney. In a fake kidney, it looks like a, it's like a pipe, but it's huge and fat and has filled fibers in it and stuff. It just like it would be like a regular kidney. Just doesn't look like it. It's just like it's it looks like it's kind of weird. It looks like uh, remember that movie Super? Uh, you know uh, what is it? Um, Ghostbusters. Kind of like kind of something like that it looks like uh it would be like out of a movie or something but it's a kidney and you run fibers and they clean your blood but drinking blood's not good for you you could die from that you're not supposed to really consume human uh body parts either um you can get diseases so uh that's where it's hard to believe that she was human because eventually she would have gotten sick because, like I said, there was not too many medicines back then. And people weren't too clean then. You can get a lot of diseases. And that's another thing with Vlad the Impaler, that he could have been a vampire because there was a, something's going on because you would get something eventually. And especially that many people you've killed. Not like 10 or like Je Jeffrey Dahmer, we killed like 10 or 12 or something. This in ate, and ate a couple. This, these people really killed people, like thousands, and did really awful things, drinking blood, swimming in them, bathing. Even that, you said she was rubbing, like, a compound, and that's it? No, she would, like, rub the blood you into know, her face and body, like, like, like women do with, with facial cream now oh, okay. and stuff like that. They, she would use it as a, as a lotion almost, yeah. like a face cream, and rub it in. Oh, okay. Well, th that right there... Rubbing blood in your eyes is not good. That's like the easiest way to get hepatitis or some kind of, you know, back then, what was a, a 
the plague, uh, what else was out then? Uh, you probably know about this. What was the big thing that people died from? The main uh, one was uh, the bubonic plague. Meningitis and stuff like that. Yeah, bubonic plague. You and Back then, somebody would have had it out of all these people, and she didn't die, so that should tell you something. Either the witchcraft was keeping her alive, and, and, and tr trust me, people, me being a witch, that shit works. And I, that's a whole other story. But she was doing stuff for the devil and, and, and witchcraft. That's probably why she was living, because she wasn't just drinking the blood. She was probably doing blood sacrifices. And what happened is she just went crazy and just didn't care. And she started killing nobles and stuff like that. But originally she just was killing, you know, regular peasant girls. And her daughter was helping her. And she had a gang of people would go and kill them. And they would like, rape. They would do. She was, she was just a, tor a terrible person. But like her, she was go back to the story. I believe that he's probably right. If this day and age that she would have the equipment, she probably would have done it that way. She probably would have hooked her body up and killed these girls. She wouldn't. She would have still killed them. I think she would have just drained their blood. But it would have been not as bad. But you never know. She was eating people too, so she still. It just wouldn't have been as messy. She probably would have had somebody cook up some leg and body. I don't know what the hell she was doing. Head and whatever she was eating, and she would have ate it. So I mean, it, I don't think it would have really mattered, James. I I think that more more to it. She just was, you know. It would just wouldn't have been as messy. I kind of agree with you on that. No, what I was saying was, I wasn't saying that she wouldn't be so bad because she would be just as bad nowadays as she was then. She was batshit crazy. That's just the bottom line. She would have been horrible here now too. But what I was saying is the the public perception of the bathing in blood. I don't think the perception would have been as bad as it is if she would have been using modern techniques instead of bathing in it if she would have had the ability to do the transfusions and everything like they do now i don't think the public would have freaked out as much about her doing blood transfusions as they would about her bathing in blood that's what i was saying um you're probably right i don't think it would have been that big of a deal but i still think she would have bathed in blood because i just think she was batshit crazy so I don't know. You're probably you're probably right though. It wouldn't have been as bad, you know. I don't think she would have got away with killing as many people as she did either. It would have been like twenty people, but even then, it would have been as you know, it would have been bad. So basically, you're right. Yeah, I gotta agree with you on that. I I, I think, but what do you think? She was a vampire. That that's a hard question to answer because it, it really boils down to whether we believe vampires even exist you know what i mean now there's there's the vampires of legend that are the you know the blood suckers that can turn into bats that whole thing that old gag um do i think she was that no i because i don't think that actually exists um but there's also a thing called clinical vampirism and there's psychic vampirism those are real things where a psychic vampire feeds off the uh, life force and the energy of somebody, their psychic energy. And that's a real thing. Um, do I think she could have been doing a little bit of that? Possibly. I mean, maybe she was feeding off the fear and, and the pain and suffering of, of her victims. Maybe she got something from that. Most likely not, but it's possible. Um, and then there's clinical vampirism, which basically what that is, is just somebody who drinks blood. Somebody who has a mental illness that believes that they're a vampire and they, they drink blood. Um, she fits that bill. Now, whether she believed she was a vampire or not, I doubt she believed she was a vampire. But I know she drank blood. So she kind of fits that bill a little bit. I think more likely than her being a vampire, more the, the likely thing is that she was a witch and a Satanist which we know is true that's historical that's fact um she was also a lutheran but she dabbled in in sat satanism and she grew up with witchcraft and, and her advisors were witches so we know that she was doing witchcraft so most likely what i think it was was blood sacrifice exactly what you said i think she was doing blood sacrifice to try to gain years on her life and, and youth and beauty and I think that mixed in with that was just a woman who had started off a little bit psychotic and a little bit of a sick puppy 
you know, her and her husband were both sick puppies. But I think it, it evolved over time into full-blown psychosis. I mean, I think she was out of her damn mind in layman's terms. Um, I think that it went on for so long that it just got worse and worse and worse. Because that's that's what happens in these things, man. You know, with, with regular serial killers, they start out killing bugs, you know? And then they move up from bugs to to, like, small animals, like squirrels or rabbits or kittens and then they move from that to dogs and and bigger animals and eventually they graduate to humans and when they start killing humans it'll be a human every couple years they have to kill in order to satisfy that urge and then it starts to progress to where they have to kill more and more often and then it gets to be where they're having to kill almost every day and that's when they always get caught because they can't keep it up for that long without doing something stupid and making a dumb mistake that leaves them open to being caught. And that's exactly what happened with Elizabeth Bathory. It's that exact same pattern. It's the classic pattern of every serial killer, almost every serial killer ever, where the urge gets to where it's overwhelming. It's more and more, and they have to keep doing it. They have to do it more often. They have to do it bigger. They have to do it better. They have to do it better. And that's what gets them caught because they get sloppy. And that's exactly what happened with her. She got sloppy. She got too full of herself. She thought she was invincible. She thought she could do anything and nobody could stop her. She started killing nobles. That pissed off the people in power and they came down and they got her ass. That's what happened. You know, if she would have been satisfied to kill peasants and just continue being the evil witch that she was and killing peasants, nobody would have said anything. <laughs> she probably could have lived her life out she could have probably racked up 25, 30, 40, 50, 60,000, whatever. However many people she could get would be how many she could kill. You know, however many villagers she actually had and peasants that were in the area would be the amount of people that she could kill if she would have stuck to them. But it wasn't enough. You know, that old thrill, it was, wasn't there anymore with, with peasants. It got to the point to where she had to do better. And then she had, on top of that, she had this this mania going about her looks, this vanity, to where she wanted to be young and beautiful again. And so she was willing to kill to get it. And she honestly believed that the blood of the young would make her young again herself and make her beautiful. And as she got older, it got worse because more wrinkles started to appear, more gray hair started to appear. So she believed she had to kill more. You know, she had to bathe more in blood. She had to do more things to, to combat time. And then eventually she moved on to nobles because she was told that noble blood was purer and stronger and it would work better. You know, I think those, those things were, the, were, were what drove her. I don't, I don't believe that Elizabeth Bathory was a, was a real life vampire. Maybe in the clinical sense. But as far as, like, the creature that turns into a bat and has the cape and says, I found to suck your blood, Ruva! I don't believe that even exists. You know what I mean? Honestly. So I don't believe that she could have been a vampire because I don't think there are vampires in real life. Um, clinical vampire, I think she fits that bill. Um, psychopath, I think she fits that bill. I, I'm not going to call her a sociopath because she, she has emotion. She has feeling you know what I mean so she doesn't really fit that bill but I think we can sum it up basically by what we said earlier she was batshit crazy she was evil and batshit crazy and she killed because she liked it you know she killed because it was necessary for what she needed to make herself young and also because she just really really dug it and I think that's the bottom line that's what it really boils down to what do you think I'm going to tell you a story. Yeah, I'm, what do we got? About ten minutes, fifteen minutes. We have just under four. If I have enough time, I'm just I'm doing a check. Oh, okay. Well, you know, we'll talk about it. I'll tell you later about it. I'm going to go ahead and um, agree to a point, but I think it's possible for anything because it says God can says the devil can do whatever he wants. So remember that. But I want to give a shout out to everybody who listens 
to all our listeners, to all our fans, all the people who promote us. Uh, love you all. Um, wish if I had more time, I'd give you uh, more shout outs, but I'll go ahead and uh, give it to Hershey because we only have about three minutes. So go ahead there, Hershey. Thank you, brother. Um, I'd like to ask everybody to check out the Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash serenity broadcasting. Um, check out the YouTube channel. Uh, just look up my name, James Hershey Jr., in the search, and you'll find the channel. Uh, it's a picture of my ugly mug wearing my blue flannel, um, James Hershey Jr. All the shows are there. We have all the episodes of Staring Into the Abyss. We have all the episodes of The Writer's Block. We have all the episodes of We're Screwed and Sports in Real Life. They're all there for you guys to watch whenever you want. Uh, if you know if you miss an episode and you want to check it out, we put them up there. It's totally free. Just enjoy. It's for you guys. Um, I'd also like to uh, give a shout out to Valley Vapors in Woodstock, Virginia. Uh, they're a vaping company that sells like you know juice and and vape mods and stuff like that. They do a whole lot to help the troops. And we're actually having a event for Carry the Fallen in Oregon coming up very soon. Uh, if you go to the Facebook page, you can see the post on it, and there's actually a GoFundMe going for it and everything. All this money goes to actually help the guys who fought over there and are coming back to help them and their families. So, you know, go to the Facebook page, check it out, and if you can help out, that would be wonderful. Because, I mean, we're not making any money off this. I don't take a penny, you know, that, that, that we raise for the troops. I don't take a single penny. I do all this stuff because I have nothing but love and respect for our vets, and I really believe in helping them out. And I've been blessed and honored enough to be able to work with Carry the Fallen before. Um, and they're a damn good charity, and they do a hell of a lot to help. Um, Sergeant Andy Springer is the guy who's running this thing uh, for, the, for the fundraiser. He's one of the owners of Valley Vapors, and he is an actual war vet who fought in Afghanistan and Iraq. And he's a hell of a good guy. He does everything in his power and goes out of his way to help his brothers in uniform and help their families. And just top-notch dude. And so please help out if you guys can. Thank you very much for everything. We love you. We appreciate your support. And until we meet again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. Bye-bye, everybody.